Uh, thank you for joining us. We are a team pandemic at the Disco, and today we'll be talking about our design for separating oxygen from ambient air via the perionic property of oxygen. So as said before, our whole entire uh, design is rooted in the fact that oxygen gas is paramagnetic. And as you can see on the right, um, this means that uh, oxygen is attracted to magnets while other molecules in air, such as like nitrogen, nitrogen for instance, uh, don't have that property. And because of this, we our goal is to design a device that uses its paramagnetism to separate oxygen from ambient air. Some previous solutions that already tackle this uh, kind of similar idea are shown here. We want to pull special attention to what's circled in purple, specifically the magnetic gradient field and the uh, membrane, because those, we will be uh, drawing upon those ideas in our own solution. Um, but also in addition to these, we also, there are also other uh, methods available that extract oxygen from ambient air without the magnetism property. Uh, but those are more costly um, energy, they use more energy, and they're also less compact, which is why we have focused more on, on our route. And as you can see here, we have a skeleton of our solution based on some of the um, previous designs. And uh, two things that we identified as specifically important for our design was the use of a membrane shown here in blue and the use of a magnet shown here in yellow. And we will explain more about these two components and sort of explain how our, they developed throughout our design in the future slides. So to go into more detail about the membrane, um, we decided to use a polyether sulfone membrane with a thickness of 20 microns. And the reason we decided on this material is because out of all the polymer membranes that we researched, it had the highest ratio of um, the diffusion coefficient for oxygen to nitrogen. And as you can see in this formula, the rate of the diffusion depends on the diffusion coefficient, which is D. Um, so how the membrane works is it splits the cylinder into two chambers and the oxygen goes to the top chamber with the help of the magnetic force, which um, creates the pressure difference. And as you can see um, in the formula, the diffusion rate also depends on the pressure difference, which is delta P. And we also wanted to sort of quantify this and see how um, it would sort of, how much uh, magnetized oxygen would be in the top chamber versus how much magnetized oxygen would be in the lower chamber. And um, when we plug this into the equation with a magnet of force of 20 Teslas, which is pretty strong, we got a um, ratio of 1.07, which means there's 7% more oxygen in the upper chamber than the lower chamber. And um, we should also mention, we did use a very strong magnet, but we thought uh, this ratio was strong, uh, high enough. So we proceeded with our design. So once we confirmed that the ratio was uh, big enough for us to uh, continue pursuing this route, we then encountered the uh, challenge of how do we uh, practically implement this magnetic field. And so we had the idea of using a magnetic gradient. So that's weak, a magnetic field that's weak at the bottom chamber and increases as you travel to the upper chamber. And the oxygen being paramagnetic will follow this uh, gradient from the bottom chamber and be pulled upward uh, into the upper chamber increasing the concentration of oxygen there. And in order to establish this gradient, we actually took inspiration from like MRI systems, so magnetic resonance imaging systems. Uh, we took three coils that they use to do gradients in MRI, uh, Hemholtz coils, Maxwell coils, and Golay coils, and we combined them to create uh, the vertical gradient that we wanted uh, in our own system. And here are some diagrams of these different coils and their shapes on the right side of the slide. There are a lot more details in our open source document, but there's not enough time to go through all of them right now. Uh, so we will continue on. And here's a uh, the diagram of what our, the coils would look like on our design. And because we weren't able to do actual experimentation with our device, we also uh, included an alternate design to create a magnetic gradient using permanent magnets instead of electromagnets. Here, uh, and there are, again, more details on this in the open source document. Um, we also calculated the rate of the diffusion for the oxygen using the force created by the magnet. Um, and like through these formulas, we found that the rate was 1.264 times 10 to the negative fifth um, centimeters cubed atmospheres per second, um, which we recognize is a very low rate of diffusion. And we would definitely need a much stronger magnet in order to actually achieve our goal. 
And as we mentioned previously just now, there are plenty of limitations to our design, um, especially when you consider that the strongest magnet ever created was 45 Tesla. And even if we had a magnet of 40 Tesla, the ratio would be 1.6 of magnetized air to unmagnetized air. And also we would probably need to um, determine more reliable mathematical models through actual experimentation rather than through research. But um, right, I'm afraid that's all the time we have. 